Well, good morning, everybody. It's Kevin at Kev's Hobbies. Uh, got a little video for you today. Um, today is about two and a half years that I've owned this Tracker Grizzly 1654 Sportsman's T model. Uh, T stands for tiller for the type of motor that it uses. And uh, I just wanted to go over with you um, sort of the pros and the cons uh, of what I like, what I don't like about the boat after two and a half years. Uh, I've used it uh, extensively. I've rented it out to guests. I've gotten their feedback on it. I've done, as you, if you have followed me for any length of time, I've done uh, quite a bit of modification to it, adding accessories, uh, small hacks uh, to it that I wanted to uh, encompass in this video and share with you in this video. And uh, really, that's really what it boils down to. Um, overall, uh, I just want to say that uh, overall, I'm happy with the boat. Um, it's it's uh, built like a tank, and I'm not going to lie. It's a little heavier, uh, a little wider than my last boat. Uh, my last boat was a 1648 uh, Alumacraft. Uh, it was a boat that I modified myself and added uh, deck decking to, so I increased the weight of it, but it was still very, very nimble. I had a 25 tiller on it, um, and it would maneuver very, very well, um, very, very easily, very easy to dock. Um, this is, again, wider, uh, heavier, you know, so it travels through the water. Um, it doesn't stop on a dime like my other one did. Uh, it takes a little bit. So docking it on a on a dock took some getting used to. Uh, you just I just can't go flying in and and stop and just coast in. I really have to be careful. It's almost like a pontoon. I mean, I have the pontoons on the back end here too, uh, which adds something to it as well. To the inability to tr probably turn on a dime probably has a lot to do with that as well. Um, but docking was, uh, was, you know, just a new learning, uh, type experience. Now it's old hat, but, uh, it did take a little bit, uh, to get used to as, as is all new boats that you, uh, you tend to get, uh, you just got to get used to, uh, how the old girl, uh, performs for you. You know, every, every woman has her charms as they say, uh, but, uh, it's, it's really well built. It's, it's a solid, uh, um, both riveted and welded. The outside is completely welded seams. Um, the structure of the boat is all welded. Um, now the deck plate and things like that are riveted in. Um, and that's understandable because, you know, you can't really put a weld after you put a plate down. So uh, things like that are, are riveted. Um, but like I said, overall, the paint's held up well, the finish is held up well. It's got a nice uh, traction, uh, kind of like stubble sand type grit on it. Uh, that's, you know, doesn't, doesn't get slick, slick in, uh, in rain or anything like that. In heavy wet weather, uh, heavy waves, it will beat the hell out of you. Um, you know, it doesn't beat, beat me as bad as my old John boat did, uh, which was a modified V as well. Uh, however, you know, this one cuts through a little bit easier, but you get very, very wet. I'm just going to tell you straight out you're If you go through any kind of serious waves, you're, you're going to end up wet. Uh, when I was duck hunting out last fall and the year fall before we hit some really, you know, windy weather and, uh, white caps. And, uh, although I, was not frightened in the, in the slightest. Uh, this boat handled it well. It's just, you're going to get wet. So good thing I was wearing waders. So, you know, but my glasses, you know, I need I need, I need a little wind, windshield wipers, uh, to, uh, clean my glasses off because, um, I got very, very wet. So did the dog. Um, so did all my equipment, uh, inside, but again, not, uh, it wasn't like I was, you know, just, you know, waves weren't c crashing over the over the bow but just the way it goes through the water you got wet let's just put it that way but other than that um 
the boat boat performed flaw flawlessly. There are some uh, positives and negatives to how the built was uh, arranged um, before I got my hands on it, and uh, I'll go over that here just in a little bit. So, um, without further ado, uh, uh, I'll just start. I'll grab the camera and uh, sort of show you uh, around uh, just a little bit, and then. Uh, and then you can let me know in the comments what you think. Uh, you got any questions on it? I'm always happy to show off my boat, uh, my accessories, my additions. Um, I've gotten great, like I said, I've gotten great feedback from my guests that have rented the boat out. They said it's set up really well, especially for the lake that uh, that I rent the boat on. Um, you know, it, it fishes very, very well. Um, it hunts very, very well. Um, the only downside is it's just a little bit on the heavy side you know for pushing it off shorelines or if you get it stuck on something uh, it's 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 a little a little bit much I'm getting a little old to be shoving stuff out uh, but there's trade-offs with everything if you want a really well-built boat you can't have it flimsy so let me grab the camera and I'll show you what's what okay one of the first things I wanted to show you was my seats uh, I bought these to replace the seat. Well, it only came with one chair uh, in here. It was camouflage, uh, but I wanted these uh, sort of like their orthopedic style, uh, very, very comfortable chairs. A uh, little bit on the pricey side. I bought them off of Amazon. I don't can remember what they were, a hundred and something dollars a piece, I think. Uh, but extremely comfortable, good back support on them. Um, they're made by Tempris Products uh, out of Dallas, Texas. If you want to look them up in uh, on on uh, Amazon, but uh, extremely durable uh, vinyl, 100% vinyl on the outside, polyurethane foam on the inside, extremely comfortable, just very very well made. Um, no signs of uh, fading or deterioration, even though it sits out in the sun quite a bit. Uh, the only downside is is that when you close the seat and it rains, uh, the seats turn uh, off white color. Uh, and, I, and I don't know what that's from, um, but as soon as you open them back up and give them a little bit of air, they kind of like uh, spring back to their original color. So I guess if there was a complaint, that would be the only thing. Uh, I did purchase these offset uh, pins to go into the... Uh, the deck and the seat and that just uh, helps with getting out of a, out of the way of um, opening you know any kind of hatches so um, maybe not so much up here but uh, in my last boat I had these pins and they were great um, but you can just go with the straight pin too now this uh, pin base right here is actually threaded in the the rod that they that pin that came with the boat is actually threaded as well um, and I'm not sure but the, the rear one might be threaded too and I'm not real sure but I don't use that one at all because it's in a location back here that I can't use because of the where the tiller uh, comes down so I had to uh, offset my I had to offset my seat uh, for a more comfortable natural uh, location don't know why um, tracker does not uh, install those seat pedestal bases in that spot the only downside to doing it yourself um, is that there is some extra uh, support underneath those those screws that are holding the plates down where I have mine it's not now the aluminum that I use or that I'm going through is um, fairly thick uh, it's thicker on the floorboard on the floor where I put this one in uh, than it is here however um, you know it's not thick so maybe one day maybe those screws will pull out I do not know um, there's no real way to get a plate uh, underneath those locations um, to screw those in I'm sure there is a, a, a way but It'd be very, very uh, difficult to get anything in there. So we just do what we what we can with what we got, and then we'll just worry about the rest later.
But I've got videos on installing these plates uh, if you want. Uh, but that's it for the seats. Uh, like again, uh, something I added, very, very comfortable. I like it a lot. And I use the, the middle seat. That's what I use. The, the seat that came with the tracker, uh, I use that for the middle seat. Uh, but I don't, I don't tend to travel with that a lot. Um, rarely that I have three people in the boat, but sometimes my guests might have uh, three, three men or uh, two men and a, and a, and a, and a boy. So he can, they can sit in the middle. The trailer trailers actually very quite nice um, now the downside is it's got these cables uh, to hook to your uh, hitch which are not the best in the world um, they don't fit uh, very well to clip in um, I would I would rather prefer chains to be honest with you uh, comes with a four pin for your uh, tail lights, uh, it has a a dolly here, crank dolly, winch uh, with with the safety on it right here. Trailer has performed very well. The trailer is very very nice. You barely can tell that you're trailering anything. Uh, the boat itself comes with these four pin locations here for shallow water uh, anchoring uh, if you're duck hunting and or bass fishing whatever I guess uh, I wouldn't do it uh, for fishing but uh, if uh, if I'm duck hunting and I got the blind up uh, these are great pin locations to keep myself stable keep the boat in one place so the wind doesn't blow us around a little bit I uh, had the boat sitting in water for a while uh, at the dock. It's a stained lake, so it, it kind of stains it a little bit. I power washed it this spring to get that off. Bunks. Uh, now I will say about the bunks, um, because the boat is so heavy, you got to get the boat into water to get it off. Uh, you got to really get it into water. My last boat was so easy to... Uh, it just floated very, very, very easily. And this one, you really got to get it buried in the water um, uh, to get the boat to, to rise up so it's easy to push off. So it's not just like, uh, you know, you can only put half the trailer in the water. Okay, I added these. Um, it, it, the, the trailer only came with, uh, Oh, uh, cinch type straps and uh, I replaced them with these uh, retractable uh, type strapping system okay this uh, ratchet system is fairly easy there's a button on the back here all you do is press the button down hold it up and uh, you can just slide it on top. I actually slide it in, inside and then let it go. And then you can ratchet the uh, boat and you can cinch it a little bit tighter, but it's a very, very easy system to, uh, to use. And then you can trailer it actually. You just hold it down hold it down and retract it and this can travel down the road empty um, you know if you're moving your boat without the boat on or moving your trailer without the boat on it so very 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 simple system two inch strap I believe somewhere around there very very taut so that's all there is to it we're back to it okay the boat comes with uh, these beaver tail style pontoons on the back uh, double step uh, dog loves it for getting in and out 
Um, they add, add, they uh, add a little bit extra flotation to a heavier motor on the back. Instead of a two-stroke, you get a four-stroke. Uh, so that just adds and keeps the boat a little bit more on level. Let's you get up on plane a little bit quicker. Uh, adds a little bit more drag to the boat, obviously. So it'll probably reduce your uh, overall speed. Uh, one of the things that I did add, now this is my my 40 horsepower Mercury outboard motor. I added a, uh, a four inch Atlas micro jack. Um, it's called a, yeah, it's micro jack plate uh, to raise the motor up um, and uh, or lower it, however you would, would care to uh, characterize that. I have my okay so one of the downsides to this is that uh, it does come with this transom saber on it, but the transom saver is not adjustable. Uh, so the motor actually rides really close to the ground. Uh, I will have to get a new transom saver so I can extend this uh, this back out a little bit further. Um, just because the micro jacker, and, you know, just extended the motor out another four inches. So, you know, it, uh, the motor doesn't, uh, it sits more level I guess you could say instead of uh, out just a little bit further uh, than it probably should while traveling down the road or being launched for that matter um, but you know you take the transom saver off before you launch it and you raise your motor up so that ain't really that big of a deal uh, on the back here uh, I have my Humminbird uh, SI and DI transducer mounted uh, to the boat the uh, dealership actually uh, provided that mount uh, put that on for me so I didn't have to mess with it um, when I'm going uh, any type of faster speed now I mounted actually this one on here it had a different one when I first got the boat I I upgraded my Humminbird um, almost immediately. I just didn't didn't like that. I wanted the SI and DI. I only had a DI model to begin with, so I remounted this, uh, put a new one on. Uh, but one of the things that I noticed is that it might be just a tad high here. I might have to lower it just a shade, simply. Uh, because when I'm traveling at any kind of speed, uh, it doesn't give an accurate reading. So it's possible that I, I may have to, you know, drop it another quarter inch or so uh, for it to uh, give me a little bit more accurate reading when I'm up on plane, that is. So um, now one of the things that I noticed that the, uh, the micro jacker did not give me any extra uh, speed. Uh, even though I raised it up, you know, another four inches, uh, what it did give me is a little bit actually more maneuverability uh, because the whole motor isn't in the water, so it's a little less drag. So the boat uh, turns a whole lot easier. Um, so that was a good thing, you know. It. Uh, it doesn't, you know, when you turn fairly quickly, it doesn't lose its bite in the water because it's back another, you know, four inches. So it's not, the prop isn't uh, hitting turbulent water, uh, as much turbulent water as it would if it was closer to the transom. 
So that's a, I guess that's the most positive, but it did not add any uh, additional miles per hour. Uh, it pretty much stayed about equal, maybe just a tad less, half a mile an hour at most. Uh, I will say there's one, there's a downside to this motor and, uh, and that, you know, everything looks to me to be mounted correctly on this boat. Uh, the motor looked like it was mounted correctly. However, um, the motor always seemed to pull on my arm. Um, you know, it wanted to Let's see, it wanted to turn, must have been left, I guess, because, you know, it would, uh, my arm would be fatigued from holding it back, from wanting to, well, actually wanted to turn right. Yeah, it would be fatigued from ha having to hold it from, from uh, going too far over that way. So they do have this tension bar here that relieves that stress from your arm. Uh, so you're going, you can just, you know, keep, uh, you know, you're not often, you know, turning uh, violently or anything like that. So you can adjust this tension bar right here, however you deem fit, to, um, you know, keep the motor uh, from pulling on you too much. Um, now they have trim tab here. Every motor does right here, and I've got it turned as far as it can turn to try to correct that issue. Um, unfortunately. That didn't do anything for me. So, um, got to do what I got to do, and I just adjusted this tensioner uh, to try to take that pressure off my arm. So, here is the to unlock the uh, steering arm is right here. Now, one thing that this this did add, you have to excuse me. I'm kind of under my little awning here and I've got grapevines growing but uh, uh, it's a nice nice some nice little protection here uh, let me show you key is here the uh, um, safety lanyard is right here with the little clip on it now when it first came the uh, safety lanyard was nice and um, you know had had, had nice uh, bungee ability on it but it's over time has faded and um, gone to nothing so that's a little disappointing and in order to uh, remove it I actually literally have to cut <laughs> that cord and you can't buy a new one of these because this is actually literally sealed on it now they do provide an extra um, safety clip right underneath the handle there in case you lose this clip uh, they provide you with an extra key. The key is here. I leave that in most times. Uh, no reason to take it out, to be honest with you, even when trailering. Uh, now this is a, um, a tensioner, friction tensioner right here. And, uh, you know, you can loosen this up. The more you do, this actually, this handle starts rattling a little bit when you, um, uh, adjust the speed on your motor when you're starting to turn it um, it's just to make it easier to you know rotate that handle um, to increase the speed but if you loosen it too much like I said it starts rattling it's a little annoying at lower speeds so I keep it uh, I keep it tightened up uh, quite a bit and that way actually if you're if you're just trolling a little bit um, you know or just you know you're going so slow because you're concentrating on your depth finder, trying to find structure or fish your locations. Um, this is a nice little tool to have. On top here is your trolling um, button right here, so you can adjust the speed incrementally. Uh, I think the slowest that I can go is about two miles an hour, um, 1.9 miles an hour. Okay, well, let's uh, let's continue on here. Uh, the boat comes with a six-gallon uh, storage tank, 
Uh, it does come with a bilge with a switch up front, uh, but I also installed a float switch, uh, which will help when it's parked at a dock to get rid of the water. Uh, you can see right over there, that's an actually Ethernet uh, switch right there for connecting my Humminbirds and my iPilot link. There's the bulb for getting gas to it. I rarely ever have to squeeze it with this uh, electronic fuel injected uh, system. So um, kind of a little little wiring little mess in there, but you know when you when the manufacturer only manufactures in certain lengths, well, you have a lot left over. Uh, the one Ethernet cable that they provide only they only make it in 30 foot length. That's it. So I only needed 10 of the 30 feet, so 20 feet of it gets wound up. Okay, let's go inside the boat and check it out. Okay, continuing with the motor here, uh, it's got the reverse forward neutral shift lever there which makes things you know a little nice i i had gotten used to shifting uh on the on the on the handle itself with my old motor um but this one uh is not the case it is a little longer handle quite a bit longer handle which is why i can't use the uh, seat location that they provided uh there uh the uh, tilt and trim button is here. I'm not gonna mess with it too much because it is uh, uh, kind of sort of locked in place with the transom saver. So I'm not gonna mess with it and show you that. Uh, there is a pull cord, emergency pull cord under the hood there. Um, so that's good. So down here, The Grizzly Tracker comes with uh, this five port uh, or four port uh, switch panel. Uh, comes with the horn, nav lights uh, with the anchor and um, navigation, uh, bilge right there. Uh, it has a uh, 12 volt uh, port cigarette lighter style, uh, but I switched it out for a double USB uh, charging port. Um, I can power just about anything. My uh, I use it for my cell phone and I also use it for my uh, minnow bucket um, oh what are they aerator for my minnow bucket. Uh, each one of these switches comes with a fused a fuse in it um, and then also there's fuse here for the bow 12 volt because there's another port like this at the bow of the boat uh, so that's the fuse for that uh, up front and then courtesy lights right here which is this button here um, and then there's one on the other end of the boat here uh, battery storage there's battery 12 volt deep cycle uh, in here interstate battery uh, I did went and go and pick up I'm going to be installing that today uh, I picked up these bus bars right here I, they just arrived today let me see if I can show you what I'm what I'm intending to do these are going to get installed today so these bus bars I got a positive and a, and a negative uh, bus bar. So what'll happen is I'll have one wire coming from the battery to this bar and one wire coming from the battery to this bar. Uh, and then all my additional accessories that I've installed will get posted on these uh, four uh, posts right here. And uh, it'll alleviate having, if you can kind of see in there, 
it's kind of a stacked mess on top of that battery there's like four or five uh, connections all stacked up and that leads to loose connections so I don't want to have that and I just want it to be nice and neat uh, now unfortunately in the back back there can't screw it into there I can't screw it obviously onto the floor uh, well I could could do it on the floor but I'm not going to do that um, doing it on the back wall back there is probably ideal but I'm not sure there's enough room for me to get in there and do do the work that I need to do so I think I'm going to mount it on this opposite end here um, just because uh, there won't be any screws sticking out I can't use the back wall uh, simply because the uh, um, it's just a thin wall and I'd have screws sticking out into the gas tank area in the back. So that's that. Uh, I did install an extra switch right here, a toggle switch. Um, it was kind of funny. I, I had a, a cover for this, but I didn't really understand that the safety cover, um, you know, doesn't really sit, sit right once you have it on, you know, it's meant to be hit and, and turned off very, very quickly. And I didn't like that. So I'm just gonna leave it just like this. But this is for my, um, to turn the, it's a power switch for my ethernet uh, switch, uh, the Humminbird ethernet switch, which allows um, my two Humminbirds and my iPilot link to talk to each other and share waypoints and follow curves and whatever but that's it in a nutshell right there so that's what that switch is for and that also has a fuse on the inside here um, as it turned out um, even though this panel's here there's a box in here and it comes out oh well comes out the length of my finger right there so the box actually extends out to there so i can actually add uh switches as needed um, but it's a good idea they they recommend the power power switch here to turn off power so that it doesn't drain your battery when not in use apparently it does drain on your battery um, when it's not in use so it was a good idea to install that switch um, I'm gonna guess same with the bilge um, but however the bilge the um, float the <laughs> float switch uh, kind of bypasses that so it'll turn on the bilge um, even without this switch and uh, nav lights you got you, you can have it down like that but I'm gonna guess it's too can leak uh, if it's if there's nothing plugged in and it's still down I think it also could leak so uh, just a little bit of voltage and if you leave it for a couple weeks without being plugged in well then there you go So another thing I added was this handbar right here. Um, this is to be used actually just as a grab bar, um, but it also provides the switch for moving my um, micro jack plate up and down. So it's a nice convenient location and I can do it while I'm on the fly. Well, my hand, my other hand is on the tiller. I can adjust this up or down uh, to adjust my speed uh, depending on conditions. If I want to get shallow, I can raise it all the way up. However, however it exists. Um, okay, now I have two humming birds installed. I got a Helix 9 G4N in the back. I have a Helix 7 G4N uh, on the front. Uh, this one here is. Uh, side imaging and down imaging the front one uh, is only uh, 2d imaging however they're networkable so anything that I can do here I can see up at my front one um, now I put these straps on specifically this cover it's a really nice cover but they're about 40 bucks uh, however when I'm trailering the boat and it's running down the road I've lost uh, well, this is my third one. So I've lost two on the road uh, so far because the wind gets to them and they just kind of like take right off. So I put straps on each one just to keep that from happening. 
because 40 bucks is 40 bucks is 40 bucks. We'll get to the hummingbirds in a minute. Uh, I'll turn up everything on and you can kind of see how things work. Uh, one of the, another hack that I installed, I installed these cup holders and um, compartment holders. They also hold hooks and whatnot on the side. Uh, nice for drinks, whatnot. Uh, rod holders, this Versatrack system uh, from Tracker is really nice. Uh, it allows you to move um, your accessories as where you need them. Again, I have the rod holder. Uh, this is a ram mount that I bought for it. Uh, it's two and a quarter inches, I believe. That's the ball for this size uh, unit. That's what I need. Uh, but I, I have it in, uh, just installed with two carriage bolts. Um, quarter 20 is what they are. And uh, it's just secured right to my Versatrack. So I can move it just a little bit one way or the other, but it's kind of nice. If I ever decide to move it or you know into a new location it's not that much of a hassle but it's a good mounting spot I don't have to drill any holes in my boat um, so kind of enjoy that got the Canon um, rod holders here and I have them mounted the exact same way with quarter 20 uh, carriage bolts and um, that makes for nice rod holder locations and I can slide those anywhere along the rail that I need it uh, I have the rail blaza uh, camera mount so that I can, uh, you know, record hands-free uh, as I'm fishing or hunting, for that matter, uh, at the front of the boat. Uh, what else? Uh, inside the boat here, I just added kind of like a padded. Uh, it's a, it's actually a cattle mat, is what this is. Um, cut a little hole there so I can that's my my middle seat location but I did that because out in a boat with a dog uh, this is a pure 100% aluminum boat uh, the metal gets really hot in the summertime uh, on 90 80 90 degree days and the dog really has nowhere to get out of uh, off a hot uh, surface so I put that there so he can lay down and uh and and just be a little cooler um it's still out in the sun um i'm gonna try to build something that can um, maybe put an umbrella up so he can sit underneath an umbrella in the shade a little bit and get out of the sun while i'm fishing uh putting an umbrella there while i'm fishing is gonna be uh probably a pain in the ass so i'll probably put the umbrella at the front uh, of the location there front of the boat in the in that seat location um Again, there's my uh, second hummingbird. It's a Helix 7. And it really adds something that the way the person that's uh, sitting in the front chair here, I don't usually fish, fish out of the front. A lot of people do. Uh, so that's a good location. Like I said, I rent my boat out, so a lot of people like it up here so they can see... Um, you know the screen from while they're fishing up here and uh, they can get all the information from the back unit which is side imaging and down imaging uh, as well now I just uh, I had a Tarova Minn Kota Tarova it's 55 pounds 54 inch uh, Tarova and it pushes this boat very very well uh, and it's um, and I ordered it with uh, iPilot, with iPilot, just plain iPilot, and it worked great. I actually kind of got really the hang of it, and it was really really great. But I look, I always look for an upgrade, so I uh, bought a kit and I upgraded the head unit to an iPilot Link, and the Link allows me to uh, not only have all the same functions that it had before, but also it will give me the opportunity to control the unit um, a little differently I'll be able to use uh, contours or a little bit better um, a track if I wanted to uh, follow a certain track like 
this summer I was fishing uh, and I was catching walleyes along probably like a oh a shoreline that was about 200 yards away and uh, or 200 yards long and it was just you know you, you go a little bit further and it was too much uh, there wasn't any fish and you go too far the other way and there was, wasn't any fish but I was catching a lot of fish in between so following that track just slowly casting along the shoreline I was doing that for about three hours but I was adjusting it all the time with my uh, remote control uh, but wouldn't it be nice to just follow a track lay down a track and just follow it hands-free and just be able to cast you don't have to worry about anything else that's why I got the iPilot link so that I can follow a track uh, forward and backwards and it will follow the exact track that you provide uh, as you can see the uh, the heading puck is up there no that's not the GPS the GPS is literally at the head of the uh, Minn Kota Tarova GPS is also located in the head of each Humminbird um, G4 unit or Helix G4 unit now it does come with the foot pedal here um, this is not a cable system uh, it's electronic foot pedal and it just makes it easier if you want to just use the foot pedal I can use it from here or I can um, use it in the back of the boat and just stretch the cable back there you can't do that with a cable system uh, I have a plug-in here this is for the trolling motor right there that comes with the Minn Kota, or comes with the Grizzly Tracker, as does this 12-volt port. I showed you where the fuse location was on that back switch panel. That's what that 12-volt that port is for. Uh, this is my charging uh, location. I added that um, to my boat because I have a two-bank charger installed uh, under, this, under this deck right here. And I'll show you that in a second. Now the boat... Um, comes with cleats, four cleats, uh, two in the front, two in the back uh, for securing anchors or ropes or whatever you need. And again, there's more for you know, those, those more uh, shallow water pin locations. I installed uh, front floodlights to the front of the boat. Uh, the only downside to that is uh, I wish they were a little taller. Now they do come with um, plates that are a lot taller, and uh, you know it's because in the in the fall, in early morning, it's really foggy out in the lake, and uh, you can't you pitch these um, down below the fog line unless you get them up a little bit. And I ran into that. Uh, when I was first using them that's just something you discover so I thought about increasing the height of these but the plates the the other plates that came with this system are just so tall it doesn't make it for easy for getting into your boat um, you know when you're you know pushing off from shore or um, you know pushing it off your uh, off your trailer or anything else so I'm just kind of like hemming and hawing about that location of that now this again is the front light port right here and it's also the front part port here that's where your horn is located um, these plates right here are removable to get back into the back of them for um, doing any kind of additional wiring and it's really nice that those are removable plates now if you really screw up or something like that the nice part is you know you could just go and have somebody make you a new plate out of you know maybe thin eighth inch aluminum paint it up and put it put it on and you'd be good to go again so you know don't worry about cutting the holes uh, just do it now this is a hack that I did I uh, installed a, a switch plate up front here to control those floodlights they also control some interior lighting LED lighting and exterior of the boat LED lighting and I'll show you that in a minute but uh, I just did a hack with a GFI um, cover 
exterior GFI cover and I painted it up and uh, that's all there is to it and essentially what it does is it protects these switches from accidentally getting turned on uh, my dog like I said I uh, is a constant companion with me and he likes to lay up here and what he when he lays up here or lean you know lays down um he turns the lights on when i sometimes don't want him to be laid down especially when we're duck hunting the last thing i want to do is to advertise that hey you know um there's a boat here instead of uh, just this hunk of brush so um and then it can also drain my battery, unknow, unbeknownst to me, if lights are on that I don't understand. So just a nice little little cover that I made um, snaps into place, and it protects those switches from being uh, accidentally turned on. Uh, these cables right here, Ethernet. Uh, now this is my transducer cable coming from my Minkota to this unit. So this unit specifically uses the Tarova transducer at the front just for 2D. So the person sitting here can actually uh, get a 2D look at what is directly underneath them, which makes it kind of nice. Um, okay, just gonna move on here. Installed rod holders, and I'm going to go over that in a second here. Um, but let me get into the storage. Okay, so this is the storage compartment. It comes with this nice little latch, and it has my front battery. Now uh, the boat did not come with the front battery. Uh, however, like I said, the trolling motor it was wired for it so they expect you to you know if you're going to put on a trolling motor uh, they wired it and uh, put the wiring down so that when you install a a, uh, a battery everything is there for you uh, to do it um, I just use it for storing my seat cushions and my life jackets um, now when I'm you know fishing for a week up north I leave my life jackets actually on the back of my chair so that makes it kind of nice um, so there is my Minn Kota uh, charger it's a dual bank charger for charging the battery in the front and the rear so um, I keep it on trickle charge anytime I'm not using it so that it doesn't accidentally drain down uh, because draining a battery down is one of the worst things you can have happen. I have added, because of all the accessories that I've installed, like the light, my, my uh, flood lights and my interior boat lighting and my exterior boat lighting. Um, and now the, you know, the Mancota and whatnot, I added a, um, fuse panel right there so just to um, you know have a little bit better cable management and, and not so rat nesty uh, back there but uh, that's pretty much it for the storage area it's like there's like there's a lot of storage space up in the back here uh, in the front of the boat so you know you can you can store your tackle in there if you want or something like that even with the battery and the battery charger being in there uh, i just choose not to just because you know with that front seat up there it's just kind of like a pain um, it's kind of in the way so i just keep my tackle boxes in this little tote up front not a big deal okay now well, that locks down pretty good. And like I said, they included um, this front uh, seat location. I installed uh, that seat location there on the side. I have a video on that, and I have a video I installed the seat location in the middle here also. Um, these three ports back here uh, are for water drainage. Uh, 
while it's raining. Um, here's an accident that does happen sometimes. The light gets turned on because I was kneeling next to it. Now, I talked to you before, I added those three rod holders there, and then I have these side rod holders, as you can see, um, installed uh, temporarily. I can move them wherever I want, but there is a, this boat is not exactly um, the best for storing rods. Um, this space in here is not long enough. It's probably only, um, I don't know, seven feet, six, seven feet from back here to right there, uh, which isn't really long enough for most rods. Uh, so you can't lay down rods like on, on your, in your boat anywhere. You have these, um, you know, these sides here that are angled that sort of cut off the ability to do that. Uh, now they have made a rod storage locker, which is what they call it. And there are ports here, which extend up into uh, the side of the boat, which extend up there. And you can put, a, I think, an eight-foot rod in there. However, there are three locations in there, three ports. Uh, but just due to the um, space provided, that's at an angle, actually. If you can kind of see that, you can see it kind of bevels down. You can really only store one rod in there. Now, if the rods didn't have reels on them, you could store three in there, no problem. But, uh, but a as it is, you could probably only store one rod in there. Uh, this is just better to store all your cans off or, or other things that you want. This is what I was kind of hoping to, I didn't know I had it up here. There we go. Okay. I like that, that uh, offset seat. It kind of gets it out of the way of this uh, storage uh, box cover. Uh, now, uh, there's my anchor light and my front nav lights storage right there in the front. Um, it really is a, is a nice spot to store that. Uh, right now, again, I have uh, I have a accessory installed in it for a camera. Uh, it's just a camera pole, it's a YOLO camera pole. But anyways, that's where I store my lights for uh, running at night. And it's always a good idea in a boat like this to carry a spare oar and a push pole in here because you never know what's going to happen or when should your electrical system get fried. But again, the downsides to this boat, I would say, would be the lack of uh, the ability to store rods uh, in it. Uh, I end up, what I end up doing is kind of laying them down right there and along that rail. And when I do that, then you can't lift up <laughs> that uh, compartment anymore because I've got rods laying along that rail. Uh, I think the boat is better for for hunting than fishing, but I'll be honest with you, other than the rod storage area, it's really good for fishing. Uh, I just don't think that they thought things out very well. Um, now, it does come with this gun locker, as they call it. Now, I, 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 don't, I wouldn't store guns in it, but uh, the only downside is it doesn't come all the way down to the bottom, but it does have this gun storage, and I store all kinds of just stuff in it. And then, and then I got uh, this little compartment here was probably for, oh, maybe storing your uh, boxes of shells, shotgun shells. However, I store all my tools in there um, for my guests or myself, should anything happen. Um, spare wrenches, uh, wire cutters, things like that, that uh, you never know what's gonna happen or when. Spare fuses also go in there. Um, so that way, you know, if anything happens, it's easily replaced. And then I also got my remote control for my 
Minn Kota Tarova there as well. The iPilot link. The floor is really sturdy. Um, you know, not many creaks or, or uh, flex or anything like that do I ever see or hear. The one thing that I did see, I noticed <laughs> as far as craftsmanship was concerned, and I didn't even realize this wasn't welded until I just looked at it yesterday, but you see this right here? This is actually a, sort of like a stabilizer to keep this, this uh, cover stiff, but it's coming loose. And I have absolutely no idea how they, you know, I don't know if they spot welded it or or what, but it is definitely um, coming loose there, if, if you can see that. And I don't know how to correct it. Uh, I looked in another spot and there's another one, but those aren't coming loose. So I don't really understand how to correct that issue. So again, that makes for a nice chair up front. Probably not a safe chair when you're underway, I'm gonna guess. Um, if you look on the data plate, they will actually tell you where to sit uh, on the boat while it's underway, right there. And it tells you uh, my one seat location is okay uh, on the back left of the boat and then um, you know sitting you know spot right there they they, they suggest somebody sit uh, and they also suggest maybe somebody sit right here when the boat is underway so you know they they never suggest that you sit in there and I can't blame them because you hit some serious waves and you could say bye bye but uh, again there's my tote with all my tackle now I use this right here as a cooler and a um, minnow bucket. Uh, one side cooler, one side minnow bucket. Now I just had an epiphany while I was actually filming this video. Um, it's not that I use one side for, you know, this is a divider actually for maybe beer or, you know on one side or and, and something else on another however this cage right here this little this little thing right here now I literally could I literally could seal this um, with some silicone all the way down and uh, leave it in place and I could separate one side for a minnow bucket and the other side for ice and uh, beer and uh, you know maybe throwing your uh, fish that you catch in there it's not very big now I have a bigger cooler bigger bigger Arctic cooler that, that maybe uh, that's a better option than this cooler for doing that I'll have to, uh, we'll have to kind of play with this, but yeah, all I have to do is use some silicone down these channels right here, and I could, I could literally make that water waterproof all the way around and have a, uh, you know, half and half. You could fill this with ice, and actually, this one would actually keep that that side cool, uh, you know, on a hot day. And it would also keep your drinks, water, beer, whatever it is, cool. So I'll have to really think about that. Uh, maybe I'll do that with my bigger one and uh, and see what's what. Yeah, I got my got my brain got my brain working here. Uh, this is a nice because it'd be nice to put this down here. This is where I I usually lay my. Um, aerator for my uh, for my minnow bucket on one on, uh, down here, but I could run the hose right through here. Another feature added was this uh, under the rail 
LED lighting. I got green LED lighting running the entire length of the boat uh, on the inside and the out, both on separate switches. And that helps for nighttime fishing. Um, doesn't blind you with um, the, a white light uh, like it would, so you can have this running and still see out into the water while you're underway. Or just while you're fishing, you can still uh, keep an eye on what's going on out on the water should you be you know fishing with bobbers or anything else um, this has really added something in addition to the courtesy lights that come with the boat itself and these are nice uh, because the, the green LED lights are nice but uh, for tying line uh, these courtesy lights actually add just a little bit extra lighting um, so you can quickly tie a line. Now I have enjoyed all these accessories that I've added to the boat to make it uh, a good fishing experience. Uh, one of the things I will be adding in the future, uh, near future, hopefully once I can afford it, will be mega live imaging. And I'm going to be setting that up uh, actually on a rail system similar to this uh, right here but it will go literally right here where I'm, where I'm sitting um, because I fished from the back of the boat uh, near my rear, trans, rear hummingbird. So I will be putting the Mega Live pole uh, right there. Now downside to this, pole costs about 400 to $500 and the system itself costs about $1,400. So altogether it's about $2,000 and isn't that a lot just to see a bunch of blips on the, on the screen telling you that there may or may not be fish there. So, uh, but, you know, it's an added convenience for my guests that are renting my boat out. Um, and just, you know, maybe something that, uh, that people would like to have and maybe I can get a little bit more, uh, be able to charge maybe just a little bit more for my boat when I rent it out to them. So it's all about the customer experience too, and my experience as well. Now I'll probably do a different video. This isn't the video to show it. Um, really like my two Humminbird units, but I'll, I'll do a separate one showing you all the features on my Humminbird units uh, that can help me um, catch more fish. Uh, like I said, I don't usually use it to identify fish as, as much as I use it to identify structure. Um, whether it be weed line, rock bottoms, sand bottoms, muck bottoms, bogs, um, contours, um, changes, just depth in general, and of course brush piles and logs and stumps. So that's what I use it for. So I recently installed a networking system on my boat uh, for three units to talk. I installed a Humminbird ethernet switch and that um, made me have to buy more cables and whatnot uh, for everything to communicate together so one of the things I did was you know I had to run cables and that's that that uh, you know makes you want to have a nice clean cable management to keep the cables out of your way and to avoid them getting uh, cut or or damaged in any any sort of way so I got them tucked up nice and neat uh, right here on the right here on the um, on the rail itself pretty much out of the way the reason I didn't tuck them up uh, under the rail itself which I could have done uh, number one if you use too long of a screw you actually get into the the, the slide rail system here Versatrack system and you can get a screw in there and then you wouldn't be able to slide your accessories down the rail the second reason is obviously I have the lighting um, installed underneath there as well and I didn't want this these cables to block any of that lighting that gets coming out from under those rails now though there's a downside to this rod holder right here and I experienced that this spring while I was fishing and while it's nice to carry the rods there while you're under travel uh, with three rods poking up while you're casting uh, those rods go up eight foot or more uh, into the air and uh, you sometimes 
hit them on the back cast or forecast um, if you're not paying close enough attention. So it was something that was obviously in the way. Now in a perfect world, uh, those would go better in the back of the boat somewhere, but there's just no good place to put those um, back here. You know, the gunnel isn't high enough off the deck to install any kind of system there. Uh, so I had to do the best I could and put it here. Uh, I obviously didn't want them back here because that really would have been in my way for fishing. So uh, they would definitely be in the way for fishing if somebody was to sit in this location here. Um, so hopefully those would be his rods that were sitting there that he would be you know, taking out and using um, while he is fishing in this location or that person, whoever that is. Um, I do like my little, you know, tackle tote here. Uh, it's really not in the way. Uh, just a good little storage uh, device for all my um, tackle boxes. Single tackle boxes makes for easy access to it. Uh, rather than being stored in there, in, in this storage area or under there, uh, just much, much easier. Now, the, the anchor, I keep an anchor on the boat even though I don't really need it. Uh, you just never know if you're really high high wind and you're, you're fishing out in some deep, deep, deeper water out in the wide open that you need. Maybe the spot lock isn't going to hold you in place. So I keep an anchor just in case. Um, or should the trolling motor battery go out uh, while you're out in the middle and, and uh, you know, you need something to hold you on your spot you don't want to go in quite yet you don't really need a trolling motor but you use it just to keep you on your spot so i keep an anchor and i usually store it underneath there uh, you can kind of tell it's kind of banged around chipped off the paint inside that storage area but that's where i keep that anchor uh, just out of the way now in a perfect world i would probably increase this to a 50 or 60 horsepower motor uh, just to give me a little extra, but I am maxed out on this boat according to it. It literally says 40 horsepower uh, motor that it's rated for, so I'm not so sure that I can uh, justify putting a, a bigger motor on it. Um, and I don't know what the Coast Guard would say about that, or the DNR for that matter. If you got any comments or questions or concerns about the Grizzly uh, Tracker 1654 uh, Sportsman's T, uh, you know, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have or comments. Uh, I like showing off my boat, as you can probably tell. Pretty proud of it, actually. Overall, happy with it. Still paying it off, obviously. Uh, but you know, slowly but surely, this is a boat that I'm gonna die with. Um, I have no intention of trading it in or anything like that, but I soon will have everything on it that I ever wanted or ever needed, and uh, and then I can just go into retirement and and uh, fish to my heart's content. So that's the uh, entire purpose of this. I've never been a big bass boat type guy. I've always been a you know aluminum aluminum boat or aluminum John boat type guy. Um, you know, they, they've just provided everything. The thing I like about the John boat over the aluminum um, V hole is <coughs> is the, the flat flat bottom of, of it. 
uh, makes for easy walk, walking around on it, especially as you get a little bit older. And I went a little wider because again, um, the wider you get, the more stable you get. And um, it, as you get older, you'll find that you know, you're not as nimble as you once were. And the last thing you wanna do is flip out of a boat because I can't swim like I used to either. So that's it. Till next time, take care. This is Kevin at Kev's Hobbies. Go enjoy the outdoors.